Sir, I'm going to appear for USCP exam. Do not know which one to start with. Which is the first subject, sir, we should really go on and start off with. Is this the confusion that you have? Then this video belongs to you. Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Pankaj Dhingra and as you all know me by now, I am a proud Fintrammer. Welcome. Welcome friends, welcome to a session wherein we'll uncover what you really need to have in your mind from the standpoint of deciding which subject in USCPA you should take first. Many of the times what we have heard, and this is not uncommon, what we have heard from various students around the world is that they do not know which sequence to follow, which subject to take first in the USCPA exam. That is the reason, my friend, we thought that it is all the more worthwhile to be here and really talk through as to what should be your right strategy. Coming on to what we really needed to discuss, which is which CPA subject to be taken at the first, first instance. Just before we really go in and, and start really getting into the details of it, let me just give you a bird's eye view in terms of, you know, what subjects you have in CPA. You have three core subjects in CPA now from the 2024 onwards standpoint, you have three core subjects which are mandatory and everyone has to give these three, they give these three exams. It is financial accounting and reporting, we call it FAR. It is audit and attestation, we call it AUD. And then you have regulation, which is like the taxation. So these three are the mandatory core subjects which anyone and everyone has to appear. And then you have three discipline subjects. We have ISC, information systems and control. We have TCP, tax compliance and planning. And then you have BAR, which is business analysis and reporting. We get this perspective now, sir. Now, which one should be taken first, sir? Now, for you to choose on which subjects you should be taking and then which subject you should be addressing first depends on three important factors. These three important factors were very much there were very much taken into consideration by me when I planned for my exams. And I can tell you these really helped me in terms of clearing these exams in the one go. These three factors are number one, familiarity. Which of these subjects is more familiar to you? I think that should be one driving force for you to decide which subjects you will take. And of course, that will help you in deciding which subject you should take first. Second important piece is which of these subjects you're doing as part of your job on day-to-day -day basis. That is again very important because more you're doing these things on day-to-day -day basis, more prepared you would be in an earlier fashion. And the third, which is again a very important factor, is that how much time do you have for that particular subject at that point in time? For example, if you're in a quarter close or a month close, which subject you should take at that point in time? It really, really should be the one that should take less amount of time. It should be, I would say, a, a lighter kind of a subject rather than a heavier kind of a subject and so on and so forth. So these three factors we should consider while deciding which subject to be taken first and we'll talk on all of these factors and we'll take on with the help of few examples also as you know what um, we should do in a particular scenario. For the purpose of having this discussion I've divided uh, two groups who would be appearing for these exams. One who are just the BCOMs who are not into the job and then the ones who are into the job and of course they're doing what they're doing. Let's take up the first bucket first, which is like people who are just the BCOM. For you, the ideal, I would say, uh, way of selecting the exams would be that you should certainly see the familiarity element on all of these subjects. And I can tell you, considering the BCOM scenario or a CA scenario for that matter, even if you're a CA and you're not into the job, the most familiar subject for you, for you would be the FAR and the audit. These two subjects will be most familiar to you. I'm not saying 100% familiarity would be there. Of course, it cannot be. Otherwise, then that will be same. But the, at least from the baseline standpoint, these are very familiar to you. The FAR, the financial accounting and reporting and the audit, that would be very familiar to you. Many of the concepts you have already done in your graduation or in your CA. In that case, you should choose in between FAR or audit which one to be given first. Because you both you have to give both of the exams any which ways, right? You don't have a choice out of it. You should only choose one subject and appear for it. I would, if I were you, I would always recommend FAR because I'm FAR is more closer to my heart. 
So I would always say FAR. And once I've given the FAR, then, of course, you know, I can pick up the audit and so on and so forth. But I have a disciplined subject coming your way, so we'll talk on to that. So idle, idle scenario for a BCom or a CA student is take down the FAR and then think about the second subject, which I think if you have an inclination towards FAR, if you are inclined towards financial accounting and reporting as a subject, you should certainly look for bar as a second subject. FAR and bar, bar is effectively an extension of a lot of the concepts that you would do in FAR. So effectively, many of the accounting, I would say areas that you've covered in FAR, the, the extension of that will be tested in bar in addition to various economical, economics related concepts or business studies related concepts or uh, IT related concepts that will be tested in bar. In addition to that, there will be, I would say 50% of the component is related to FAR. So effectively, if you have done FAR, you have an inclination towards it, then you should choose bar. And then the third subject should be audit. That's what I feel should be the right, right way of choosing the subject for any VCOM students. And of course, the fourth subject would be the regulation and you should move on. However, for the folks who are not inclined towards financial accounting and reporting, and they're more, I would say, interested in, let's say, audit. They want to more uh, do audit per se. Then they should choose on the financial accounting and reporting, the audit, and then in relation to audit, they should choose on IAC, information systems and control, from the discipline subjects, and then give the regulation. Hope you get that. Now, for the folks who do not have any interest in the audit, and they want to appear for regulation and they have like inclination toward taxes, they can choose out TCP as a discipline subject. Then the sequence would be, let's say financial accounting and reporting, audit, and then regulation, and then the TCP. That fourth subject would be the discipline subject. That should be the sequence for the folks who are doing BCom. Again, this has taken into consideration your familiarity of the subjects and of course, somewhat somewhere the ability for you to clear the exam would be higher because all of these subjects are more or less um, i would say known to you in some way or the other in the sequence that you're following is that clear yes sir again i'm just telling you from my own understanding standpoint there are folks who love audit and they want to start off with audit and then do far which is absolutely fine there is no harm in it I prefer financial accounting and reporting first and then audit and then you know later on as the other subjects because I have more inclination towards financial accounting and reporting. And I can tell you one thing, out of all the subjects, audit somehow is the toughest from the standpoint of understanding the questions in the exam. You would find many students struggling in audit in CPA at times primarily because they have not understood the question rightfully or the answer choices that they've seen are almost similar. So they struggle at times, you know, you would learn it over a period of time, but that's the sequence I would have for the BCOMs and the CAs or anybody for that matter who has not been working anywhere. But now coming on to the folks who are working somewhere, either let's say in the audit firm or in the accounting firm or doing different kind of roles, let's say audit role or accounting role or tax roles, depending upon, you know, what they're doing. Over there, the familiarity really comes to the play. Uh, you know, because somewhat, somewhere, your familiarity and your role uh, really gets a, a big time uh, bump up over there. Let's, let's take the same example and, and switch on the gears to the people who are, let's say, working on the audit domain. For them, they're deeply into audit all the more, time, and I would say, uh, for all the more number of hours in a week and, and month and year and so on and so forth. So for them, the first subject has to be audit because they are deep completely into it deeply into it probably it'll take if they're very much familiar they're completely into it from the job standpoint let's you know forget time for now we'll come on to you know which time which subject we think will take more time we'll come on to that towards the end but at least from the familiarity standpoint and from the job standpoint for you audit should be the first thing for controllers let's say controllers function for completely into financial accounting reporting as a function far should be the first one to choose for the people who are completely into taxation, and I've seen various students now who are, you know, who are with us and have been appearing for various exams, you know, if people who are really coming from the tax domain, they should choose on certainly the tax first. And then comes, do you have an interest area in relation to tax? Then choose the second to be the TCP. 
If you have an interest area for audit, choose the second to be the ISC. If you have an interest area for FAR, choose the second to be the bar. And then the third one should be, of course, the audit or, you know, the, the FAR, depending upon what you're choosing. Uh, and then the fourth one should be, of course, regulation as we discussed in the BCOM area. Is that clear? Yes, sir. That, I think, has been the philosophy which we at Fintram has been following. And of course, really, it has really helped me as an individual. And it has been helping my students to really decide the right course of action for them. And of course, coming up with the flying colors. One thing that I really want to give you my two cents on is that from the timing standpoint, what I really feel is that FAR and audit takes really good amount of time. Really good amount of time. So whenever you're really thinking of appearing this, at least three to four months of time you should really have at your hand when you're appearing for the exam. Regulation right now, considering there is a lot that they have moved from regulation to TCP, the regulation takes, I would say, at least two to two and a half months of time now. So it is less in terms of the volume, uh, more in terms of depth, I would say. When it comes to, let's say, discipline subject, bar really takes a good amount of time. Again, three months of the time you would need in the bar. ISC, on the other hand, you know, would be more quicker. You just need two months to really prepare for ISC and sit for the exam. And TCP, again, takes just the two months of time to really for you to appear for the exam. Is that clear? I hope I was able to give you at least some perspective that should help you in terms of deciding what should be your uh, choice of subjects and what should be your sequence. If there is anything specific that you would want to ask in relation to this area, you can really comment down below, reach out to me, and I'll be happy to really talk to you on all of these areas. This is what we have been doing with all the Fentrammers, and that is the reason we have such a high success rates in terms of helping our students becoming the qualified CPAs. I hope you liked the video. If you did, if it did, then do do press a like button and of course subscribe us to for keep getting these videos on an ongoing basis. I'll see you again in the next one. Till then, this Pankaj Tingra signing off.